Hello, good afternoon. I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC News Break. Agriculture Minister Dr. David Estwick believes people should respect a cabinet member's decision to disagree with the party in power. He made the comments last evening as he officially broke what could be described as a self-imposed silence after earlier in the year publicly expressing disagreement with some of the measures being proposed by the DLP to stabilize the island's economy. Dr. Estrick was the guest speaker at a DLP St. Lucie branch meeting. I'm confident that there are still a number of things that we can do. And I am confident that we're going to get to do them. And I am confident that if we make those adjustments and so on and so on, that we can get out of this uh, difficulty a lot faster. I wasn't afraid to say what I had to say then. And the time will come very soon when I, may, I might have to say what I have to say again. <laughs> if that time comes, well, so be it. But I know this, that when I said what I said, it wasn't to be anti-Democratic Labour Party. It wasn't to hurt the party, it was to try to guide them in a different perspective. Dr. Estwick told supporters he's aware that people have described him as unstable, among other things. As though, you know, um, you know I, I, I'm somehow this villain of the party and, and this and that. Far from being true. Far from, and, and it's for that reason I just decided, look, let me just let it rest. Let me just let it rest. Don't say nothing. But when I ain't say nothing, I hear to say, you ain't, you ain't, I ain't Estwick, you ain't talking. When I talk and I say what is true, then they still quarreling about that. So I decided, listen to me, keep your mouth shut. I have nothing to say. Don't even talk about agriculture. And I, and I did exactly that. And it was Minister Kelman. When he asked me, I said, listen to me, David, look, boy, be true to yourself. The Attorney General is pushing to have former inmates who are deserving of a second chance reintegrated into the workforce. To push his case, he highlighted the case of a former inmate who wrote to the Prime Minister, Prendell Stewart, detailing how difficult it has been for him in securing employment. Mr. Brathwood wants the business community to assist such individuals. To see how we can help um, more ex-offenders. More ex and I, I quoted the, the date of the letter uh, because it predated my call last week in another forum. I know that the dutiful business people that you are, you will institute your governance that will efficiently manage your hiring and employee practices um, to, to accommodate some of the men and women um, that, I, that I speak about who are deserving of a, of a second chance. With respect to the backlog of cases in the court system, Mr. Brathwaite says the process of expediting them is ongoing. Following a meeting with the ADR Association on, on Tuesday, I wish to publicly um, suggest um, that the general public and corporate Barbados be less litigious and resort to mediation. I'm committing a mediation bill to Parliament next year. I'm publicly saying to you that following my discussions with the ADR Association that once I'm Attorney General of this country, that I will ensure um, that an ADR bill, a mediation bill is brought um, to Parliament next year. A new local company has been formed to organize and manage shows internationally. According to promoter Al Jilks, FAS Seven Star Entertainment was created because of the success the parties involved have had with the Hennessy Artistry Show. We formed, we united and we created this company called FAS Seven Star. And apart from Hennessy Artistry, um, we are prepared that if there are any other significant international productions like this, which people want to employ us to, to present, even if it's the next Rihanna show, even at <laughs> anything that of an international nature that people wants to, want us to do, whether here, regionally or internationally, we have the expertise, we have the manpower, we have the technology in Barbados. Barbadians have been asked to join with their parish ambassadors in wearing their parish colors this month to further celebrate independence. This from Celia Toppin, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth. 
She was speaking to the media shortly before accepting a check from the Insurance Corporation of Barbados Limited to the ministry in aid of community independence celebrations. We are here to ask, the, you know, to invite the public to come on board with this concept of wearing your parish colors during the month of, in, of, of November as we celebrate our independence. Because the polo shirts are the official att attire of the parish ambassadors, the attendants, and the parish in independence committees throughout their tenure. And we want to encourage all Barbadians to follow suit and identify with their parishes by wearing their respective colors. ICBL has been the sponsor of the celebrations for eight years. Communications assistant Damien Maskell said the company has always had a strong focus on providing the youth with ways to better themselves. At ICBL, we have a soft spot uh, for youth development and we like to support initiatives that impact young people directly in a significant way. And we see our partnership uh, with the CICS as a long-term one, where we know we are making, the organization making a meaningful contribution to developing the nation's young people. The Inter-American Development Bank is looking for more ways to help Barbados improve its technical, vocational, and educational training program. IDB representative Joel Bransky says the bank already supports the island's skills for the future program, which focuses mainly on improving basic academic, technical and vocational and personal quality abilities. Speaking at the Barbados Community College 41st graduation ceremony, Mr. Bransky noted that in a competitive job market, individuals with these skills are much more successful. He says donor agencies like the IDB are increasingly recognizing the importance of TVET in supporting development. The program has demonstrated its support for public funded TVET institutions like the Barbados Community College through the development and implementation of business plans, leadership and capacity development, training of assessors and verifiers, and improved data and information system. Ladies, gentlemen, graduates, the Skills for the Future is the first in a series to support education and training. We look forward for more opportunities to strengthen post-secondary, indeed all education in Barbados. Time for a break now, but when we come back, we'll have news from the region and further afield. Stay with us. Happy is the child that has his own.